coding skills have improved each season. So this year we set the ambitious goal for ourselves to get the full score. We had to consider having only two team members and how best to do all of this in only two and a half minutes. To keep us on track, we created a goal spreadsheet and planned our mission strategy. Number one, work as a team. Our game strategy was designed so the missions on the left side of the field were done before moving to the right so we wouldn't have to double back. Because of this, we decided to split the field in half and each began working on our chosen side. Since we only have the parts to create one robot, we made an identical base without any motors so we could test simultaneously. When one of us got stuck or didn't know what to do, we would ask the other for inspiration. One example is the artificial habitat mission. It was too slow and unreliable, so Tristan asked me for ideas. We then worked together to make it better. It now works every time. Number two, function over form. At the beginning of the season, we worked on our strategy and thought about what captains we could use and what mechanisms worked for multiple missions. We also made strategy charts to plan our path. Next, we started prototyping our attachments. One way we did this was using wobble plates to prototype mechanisms. This is how we designed the Feed the Whale mission. We have a ramp that falls when an arm is pushed to drop the krill. Number three, determine controls and robot design based on the field. At the beginning of the season, we thought about using multiple sensors, but decided we only needed the built-in gyro sensor for more precise movement. We decided to use small pulleys for wheels instead of a ball bearing, which allows us to drive forward straighter. We designed our robots so we could easily add color sensors if needed. After our qualifier, we realized that it wasn't lining up on the send over the submersible mission, so we decided to add them inside the robot so we could grab the line. It now works every time. Number four, include quick and home changeovers. Our robot has axles on a frame that interlock with our attachments so they can go on and off quickly and easily. We use dog gears and ball pins for easy motor connections. We also have jigs for faster and more precise alignment. This is very important because we only have one person on each side of the field. Number five, gain inspiration from other resources. One helpful resource this season was Team Octopuses from Ohio, was watching YouTube videos from other teams. Team Octopus has inspired us to try a more unique and reliable method for the Coral Tree mission. We referred to the website Prime Lessons to research programming turns, color sensors, and drive straight blocks. The most helpful resource was volunteering at several FLL competitions. We had become frustrated with some of the more challenging missions, and seeing how other teams tackled them inspired us to keep working. Number six, incorporate passive attachments. We use passive mechanisms in each of our runs. One example is the Kraken Treasure and Raised Mass mission. We have a ramp with hooks on the ends that lifts the mass as a one-way curtain collects the treasure chest. Number seven, achieve multiple functions with the same motor. For run four, we use a rotating arm that completes five separate missions. In run one, we use a linkage to activate the coral buds. When the motor turns, it also drops an arm to collect four mission lines. Number eight, have simple and reliable programming. We use gyro turns that align the robot to a specific angle in the field and dead reckoning turns that use a certain radius for a number of rotations. We also use comments in our code to make it easier to find the motion we need. We use broadcast blocks in our code to do things simultaneously. For example, in our first run, we drive forward and raise the forklift at the same time. In our first and third run, we use our custom drive straight blocks to drive across the field reliably. Number nine, continuous improvement. Everything has gone through multiple iterations at some point. For the Coral Tree mission, we went through many, many different designs, including using a chain, a passive wall, or a rotating arm. But after testing, we settled on a forklift design with fangs to lift up the tree. Number 10, testing for reliability. We made testing spreadsheets to document our robot performance. The sheets have a notes column so we can track what happened and what we changed on either the robot or in the code. For our third run, we had a motorized scooper to collect the krill. After 
after we tested it, we discovered that it worked better passively, but that it was more reliable with a gyro turn because the wheels were slipping. Although we haven't achieved the full score this season, we are very proud of our persistence in working on the robot game with just the two of us and can now achieve 530 points. This season, we dove into our robot game and submerged ourselves in our robot design. And thank you from Load Robotics.